What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our 15th example video following our course on proof writing. Now, today's example video is going to be on strong induction, so let's go ahead and get into this first example here. So this example says, every amount of postage that is at least 15 cents can be made from four cent and five cent stamps. Now, if you'll recall, the difference between strong induction and regular induction is the presence of multiple base cases that we will need to prove our induction steps. So let's go ahead and write out our base cases here. So since we're starting out with at least 12 cents, let's go ahead and make our first case when we are trying to make postage out of 12 cents. So 12 is equal to four times three. So that takes care of our 12 cent postage. Then we'll do 13 cents. And we can write 13 as four times two plus five times one. Then we'll do 14 and we can write 14 as four times one and five times two. And then our last base case will be 15 and we can just write that as five times three. And we can see that if we went on to 16, it would be redundant as we would just have four times four and we would kind of repeat this loop. So let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis now. So we're gonna suppose for M greater than or equal to 15, which is less than or equal to K, we have non-negative integers A and B, such that we can write M in the following way where it is equal to four times A plus five times B. But that means we can write k minus 3 in the following way. So we can write k minus 3 as 4a naught plus 5b naught with a naught and b naught also being non-negative integers. So next we're going to consider the k plus first case. And right away we can see that k plus 1 is going to equal k minus 3 plus 4. And then we're going to make the following substitution. We have this for k minus 3, and we can make that substitution here. So that will give us that this is equal to 4a naught plus 5b naught plus 4. And we can see that we can factor out a 4 here to get 4 times a naught plus 1 plus 5b naught. And so we can see that that completes our proof as we have expressed our k plus first case in the proper manner. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our next proof. So this problem involves Fibonacci numbers and it says prove that the Fibonacci number f sub n is even if and only if 3 divides n. So let me begin by recalling our definition of Fibonacci numbers here. Okay, great. So the Fibonacci number sequence is recursively defined as follows, where we have each successive term is defined as the sum of the previous two terms with zero and one being our first two terms. Great. So let's go ahead and do our base case now. So our base case is going to be f sub three, which is equal to two, and obviously two is even, and we'll have that three divides three. Great. So then we'll write out our induction hypothesis next. So we're gonna suppose that for all k greater than or equal to zero that f of k is even if and only if 3 divides k. And I'm abbreviating if and only if with that iff there. So now we're going to want to consider our k plus first case, or in this case our k plus third case, because that would be the next even number here. So we're going to consider k plus 3 uh, with f of k being even. And so to start, I want to note the following. So if 3 divides k, that means we can write k in the following way, where k is equal to 3 times a for some uh, non-negative integer a. But that means we can say the following about k plus 3. That means k plus 3 is equal to 3a, substituting our value for k that we just wrote out above, plus 3. But that's equal to 3 times a plus 1. So of course we've completed a simple proof here that 3 will divide k. Great, so that's a very simple proof that three will divide k plus three. So let's go ahead and move into our definition of f of k plus three here. So we'll have f of, so we will have that f of k plus three is of course equal to f of k plus two plus f of k plus one. But if three divides k plus three, then we know the following. We know that three will not divide k plus two and 3 will not divide k plus 1, but that means that f of k plus 2 and f of k plus 1 are not even. 
but that means we've expressed our k plus third Fibonacci number as the sum of two odd numbers. And since the sum of two odd numbers is always going to be an even number, we have proved that our k plus third Fibonacci number will be even. f of k plus three is even. Great. So that finishes off this proof. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. So here we have a fun little golden ratio problem. We're gonna denote the golden ratio by phi, which is the larger solution to the equation x squared equals x plus one. We wanna show that phi to the n is equal to f sub n times phi plus f sub n minus one, where our f n's are representing the Fibonacci numbers here. So let me go ahead and get our definition of Fibonacci numbers from the last problem, and then we can get this one started. So as always, we are going to want to start with a base case here. So our base case here is going to be when n is equal to one. And so when we substitute n equals one into our equation there, we will get the following. We will have phi to the one is equal to f sub one times phi plus f sub one minus one, which is f sub zero. So that will be equal to phi is equal to, well, f1 is just one, so that will be phi, and then uh, f sub zero is just zero. So we will have phi is equal to phi. So that will confirm our base case there. So next, let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis. So for our induction hypothesis, we are going to suppose that for all k greater than or equal to zero, we have that phi to the k is equal to f sub k times phi plus f sub k minus one. Okay, great. And then we're going to consider the next case. So let's consider phi to the k plus one. And we wanna show that that is equal to f sub k plus one times phi plus f sub k. Great. So let's note right out the gate that we can write this in the following way. We can express this as phi to the k times phi. And then we can go ahead and make a substitution using our induction hypothesis that I will outline here in blue. So that will give us the following definition for phi to the k plus one. So we will have phi times f sub k phi plus f sub k minus one. Okay, great. And from here, let's go ahead and multiply that through. So let's see what we get when we multiply our phi in there. So we will get f sub k phi squared and then plus f sub k minus one times phi. Great, and so here is the really cool part of the problem. So let me go ahead and write out this fact for you that we are going to use to solve this problem. f sub k times phi squared is equal to f sub k phi plus f sub k. And this is by the fact that phi is the solution to x squared equals x plus one. So let's go ahead and make the substitution now that we know this fact. So that will give us f sub k phi plus f sub k plus f sub k minus one times phi. And from there we can just factor out a phi. So that will give us phi times f sub k plus f sub k minus one plus f sub k. But by the definition of our Fibonacci numbers, this is just going to be f sub k plus one. So that will give us f sub k plus one times phi plus f sub k. And we can see that that is exactly what we were trying to prove here. So that finishes this proof off. So let's go ahead and get into the next one. Okay, so this one is about trees. So let's go ahead and try and prove that if a tree has n vertices, then it has n minus one edges. So as always, let's go ahead and begin with a base case. So to take care of our base case, we're going to make the following observation. We're going to observe that if a tree has one vertice, or one vertex, I should say, then it has no edges. But if it has no edges, then it has n minus one edges, which is zero. So that completes our base case there. Now I'll go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis here. So we are going to suppose that for each m, which is between one and k, any tree with m vertices will have m minus one edges. Okay, great. So now in order to prove our induction step, we're gonna begin by going ahead and letting capital T be a tree with k plus one vertices. And I'm gonna do a lot of the explanation of this using a picture, so let me go ahead and draw that for you now. Okay, great. So there I've went ahead and drawn a tree, which we will call T, that has 
by construction k plus 1 vertices. So next we are going to want to pick an edge and call that E. So we're going to choose this edge right here to be our E. And from here we are going to remove E but leave its endpoints. And so in doing so we are going to get two smaller trees. We'll have one on this side over here. We're going to call this tree T1 and over here we're going to call this T2. So let me go ahead and write that down. We are going to remove E. And then by construction we have made these two separate trees T1 and T2. And so from here we are going to suppose that T1 has x vertices and T2 has y vertices. So by our induction hypothesis, so I'll go ahead and write that out by IH, since x is less than k plus 1 and y is less than k plus 1, we know that x has x minus 1 edges and y has y minus 1 edges. And so now we want to recall that our original tree T which was the entire tree, has x plus y vertices. So I'll go ahead and write that out. And then it also has x minus 1 edges from t1 and y minus 1 edges from t2. Plus t has one more edge, which is the edge we removed, e. Okay, great. So adding all these up, t has x minus 1 plus y minus 1 plus 1 edges. But that's equal to x plus y minus 1 edges. But we can see that that means that t has one less edge than it has vertices. So that means that t has x plus y vertices and x plus y minus 1 edges. But that's exactly what we needed to prove to prove this k plus first case here. Great, so let's go ahead and get to the next problem. So this is our final proof for our video. We are going to define a sequence by a0 equals 2, a1 equals 5, and for n greater than or equal to 0, we have the following definition for our sequence. We have a sub n plus 2 is equal to 5 times a sub n plus 1 minus 6 times a sub n. We want to show that a sub n is equal to 2 to the n plus 3 to the n. Okay, great. So let me begin by writing out the first five terms of this sequence here. So we will have 2, 5, 13, 35, and 97. And we're going to use these to do our base cases. So let's go ahead and write out our base cases for strong induction here. So let's first do when n is equal to 0. Well, when n is equal to 0, we will have a sub 0. And like I said, we know that that is equal to 2 and that is equal to 2 to the 0 plus 3 to the 0, so that one checks out. Next, let's do when n is equal to 1, and so then we will have a sub 1, and a sub 1 is equal to 5, and that will be equal to when 2 to the 1 plus 3 to the 1, so that one checks out as well. And then for our last base case, we will do when n is equal to 2, and we know that a sub 2 is equal to 13, and that is equal to 2 to the 2 plus 3 to the 3. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis now. So our induction hypothesis is going to be, suppose for m, which is greater than or equal to 2, and less than or equal to k, we have the following relationship. We have that a sub m is equal to 2 to the m plus 3 to the m. Okay, great. And so in particular, since we have that k minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1, which is less than or equal to k, then we can write the following. We'll have that a to the k minus 1 is equal to 2 to the k minus 1 plus 3 to the k minus 1. Okay, great. So now, like usual, we want to consider our k plus first case. So let's go ahead and write that out. We are going to consider a sub k plus 1, which by the definition of our sequence is going to be equal to 5 times a sub k minus 6 times a sub k minus 1. Great. But now we can imply our induction hypothesis to these two terms. So once we do that, we'll get the following definition for a sub k plus 1 and that'll be 5 times 2 to the k plus 3 to the k minus 6 times 2 to the k minus 1 
plus 3 to the k minus 1. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and multiply that out. So we'll get 5 times 2 to the k plus 5 times 3 to the k minus 6 times 2 to the k min minus 1 minus 6 times 3 to the k minus 1. And so we can see that we can consolidate our powers here on our negative terms, and that would give us minus 3 times 2 to the k, and minus 2 times 3 to the k. And then on our left-hand side, we will have 5 times 2 to the k still, and 5 times 3 to the k. And so now we'll just factor 2 to the k out of our 2 to the k terms, and 3 to the k out of our 3 to the k terms. And so in doing so, we will get the following. We will have 2 to the k, times five minus three, and then we'll have then we'll have plus three to the k times five minus two. And we can see that that will give us two to the k times two plus three to the k times three, which is of course going to be equal to two to the k plus one plus three to the k plus one. We can see that what I'm underlining in blue here is exactly what we wanted to prove. So thus we have proved this for our k plus first case and completed our induction step, which has completed this proof by strong induction. So that finishes this last proof off and that's a good place to stop.